Peace and shalom. My name is my brother E. I'd like to welcome you back to another daily post of God's ministry. I pray that you guys are blessed in the name of Jesus. We're going to do what we always do in God's ministry. We're going to call upon the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we love you, Holy Spirit. You're welcome here in the name of Jesus. We just call upon the Holy Spirit to be here and for the presence of God to be here right now in the name of Jesus. And for me to decrease so you can increase, Lord. Speak your word, Lord. I just pray that you bind any false prophetic speaking spirits, any um, familiar spirits, any spirits of witchcraft, cult. Just bind it off out and away from me and this word and away from everybody in the sound of my voice in the name of Jesus. Lord, I just pray for your word to be your word only. To let this word bring confirmation to your children or understanding growth. And I pray that it set the captives free, preach the gospel to the poor, heal the broken heart, and make disciples out of the nation. And baptized through the fire of your Holy Spirit. And I pray that this word doesn't fall on deaf ears, but it reaches all those who's tending to reach. I pray that it saves someone's life. I pray that it blesses someone's life. I pray that it wakes somebody up to the true word of God and people are blessing it. I just pray I just called for the peace of God to surpass your understanding right now just to cover me, cover this word on the sound of my voice, cover all those on the sound of my voice so everybody can know the true peace of God, Father, I pray that it invades their homes and their houses and those of your children in the name of Jesus and I pray that witchcraft breaks, witchcraft flees in the name of Jesus on the sound of my voice by the name and the power that's in the name of Jesus, witchcraft be gone in the name of Jesus, people be healed in the name of Jesus. Oh, restoration in the name of Jesus of health, mind, body, soul, and spirit in Jesus, my name. I pray for miracles. I pray for the blood of Christ right now to cover all those things out of my voice in Jesus, my name. I pray for a washing to cleanse us all from thoughts and emotions and feelings that is not of the Lord, that's not pleasing to the Lord. Just cleanse us through the blood of Christ, Lord. I just act for healing for those who need healing. There's people going through things in their stomachs, people going through things in their legs, in their minds, in the top of their head. I pray for healing in the name of Jesus right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and I pray that you're glorified. There's people who've been attacked by the dark forces of witchcraft and sorcery. I command it to leave, break them off in the name of Jesus right now in the sound of my voice. I, I decree and declare that no witchcraft, no witchcraft shall, shall prosper in the name of Jesus. It's done in the name of Jesus. I just believe that people are set free, Lord, from witchcraft, sorcery, and the black magic in their car. I just believe that people are healed in the name of Jesus. I just believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every time that rises up in judgment against us shall be condemned. I just believe in you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We just praise your holy name, Father. We just ask for your angels to surround and about us. Just pray for a hedge of protection in the name of Jesus, surround and about us, and to protect us from everything that's evil, demonic, and satanic. And I pray for your healing, restoration of mind, body, soul, and spirit to restore us back to whatever it is that you have called us to be, Father. Bless us with peace, bless us with joy, bless us with happiness. And I pray that you are glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Shalom. Shalom, everybody. <laughs> God bless you guys. God bless you. So, the Lord wanted me to give a quick snippet. This is for those, like, you know, uh, we have so many people who say, they are this, they are that, right? They are with God, they, they practice uh, what God practice, and they, the Word of God. And, you know, Yeshua was our king, was a uh, offense, offense to so many because he reflected and made them um, hypocrites in, in their own words, and, you know, and made them see themselves, you know, and this is why he was a big threat to the Pharisees at the time, of the, uh, the so-called uh, Latter-day uh, the churches of that day, so to say, which was the, the synagogue, the temple, Jerusalem, you know. And these were oh, two students that know the law. They're supposed to have been raised since, you know, since a young early age to be studied under the law. And they were supposed to be keepers of the law. But they they transgress against the very laws that they said that they know. And they did it willfully. And some knew, some were ignorant, and some but a lot new. And Jesus was a stumbling block. I say this all the time. He was a stumbling block for the unbelievers to stumble into belief. Because what he did, he was a fence, a stumbling block for those who didn't believe that he was the Son of God into falling into belief that he was the, the Son of God by the miracles and by the resurrection and by people being saved and delivered and the truth coming out who Jesus is. So, in our, in, in our modern time and day, we have people who, who, who say they are from God or they, they're walking with God, but behind closed doors, 
and not doing the things that God wants us to do. Now, we all know that, you know, we all fall short of the glory. You know, there's nobody perfect. We perfect in Christ and uh, whatever Christ is doing in our flesh to crucify our flesh, drawing us, walking our salvation. But we're talking about committing sins and living in sin, right? There's a difference between you getting upset and, and sinning and that, that anger. You know, you're getting angry at somebody because somebody probably ticked you off, pissed you off, got you angry, and you, you've been trying to exercise the fruit of the Spirit, right? Peace, patience, and love. And then eventually it gets to the point where you just run out of patience, you run out of peace, you run out of all the things that you were calling on God to, and then you just, you just might say something or, or, or speak in a manner tone that's angry and frustrating to that person because you, you kept your tongue, you held your tongue. And you see, God sees that too, you know? It's like, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, we, there's a well with everybody. Just picture everybody has a well, right? And in that well, there's um, there's um, um, a grace time that everybody has. You know, people don't want to believe this. This is why we call and we ask God for more grace. And then something he gives, something he don't, depending. But, you know, when people misuse and mishandle people, you know, and they keep taking from the well, keep taking from that person and taking that person for granted, taking that person uh, as the person's kindness for weakness, right? And they keep going to the world, withdrawing, withdrawing. Eventually that well is going to run dry and there will be no more grace time. There will be no more peace to give. There will be no more, uh, you know, understanding. It would be like, well, you took from that well so much and you disvalued uh, the water. You just used the water sporadically. You just took it out and you didn't think about that, that water running you know, dry, you know, and this happens with a lot of us when we meet people or we, with, with people in situations, they take our weakness for kindness, I mean, they take our kindness for weakness and they take advantage of us because uh, we are children of God, right, and I told you, I told you guys this, this is important too because a lot of people who are sinners, they can smell holiness, you know, so they know, they know, you know, they can meet, read God's or they want to know what kind of religion you're in, <clears throat> to know what kind of practices you practice this in order to manipulate and control you because if they study the religion that you're in they're able to play and and use that as a tactic to uh, the art of persuasion you know to persuade people how to manipulate control people according to their belief and what they believe in so there's people who study these things there's, they call it the art of persuasion uh, they have books they have um, classes that people go to um it's done in business it's done in, in, so, in, in so, certain social arenas right but we have people who use that for the wrong attack, you know, to control and manipulate people, um, and, and to manipulate and control people, right? And I've been in situations where I, I, I've seen that a lot with people um, trying to manipulate and control certain factors in my life or other people's lives, right? And they, I see their intentions. I've been seeing their intentions, but it's just, uh, you know, see, like, people trying to study someone and find out what makes them mad, what makes them upset, what would get them mad, what would get them upset, what would make them happy at peace or to calm them down when I do this. When I do this, they're going to be forgiven because they are Christian or because they're from this religion or this faith, so they have to forgive me. They have to make it better. They, they, they have to, you know. So the Lord wants us to be careful with those kind of people. Those are narcissist people. Those are very psychopathical people who will study someone to, to know how they tick or un try to understand them so they can be able to manipulate and use them and then turn it around on them when those that, that time of grace runs out, when the world runs out, right? So there's a lot of people who are like that in this world because of the way the world is. You know, we all know that evil is good and good is evil, you know? So, you know, this world is upside down, right? So the Lord just wants us to be aware of these kind of people because, you know, there's people who are, who are, uh, they can smell holiness, just like we, uh, being uh, men and women of God, we can smell wickedness, we can smell sin, you know, we can smell it, we can see it, we know. And, you know, even though we are, are, are saved, right, and we don't practice it, we still could know when somebody's sinning, you know, because when you're saved, you, you used to be a sinner yourself, so you know, you can feel it. The Spirit tells you, like, when somebody's sinning or somebody's in sin, because your spirit will be bothered. Your spirit will be bothered by that person, spirit who's in sin, 
right? And there would be a disconnection because, if, if, you know, God knows when the person is struggling with sin. It's different. Struggling with sin, trying to get themselves right. But we're talking about somebody who willfully sins and trying to hide it. And they're constantly sinning and they come around you and they pretend like they're not sinning or pretend like they're with God and they're not with God, but they're sinning and practicing sinning. So the Lord speaks about these kind of uh, people to be aware of these type of people because they, you know, they're in front of you, they put on the God robe and behind your back, they put on the sinner's robe, you know, and they out there doing all sorts of ungodly things. And we're going to speak about this, right? This is um, chapter 3 in the book, for, uh, First John chapter 3, verse 8. Um, it says, whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Okay, so we know what practice is, right? Someone who's constantly uh, preparing their mind, preparing themselves to do an event, to accomplish a, a, a particular goal or a, 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 a typical uh, uh, accomplishment they're trying to do to obtain so they sit there and practice like if you if you're going to be playing basketball and you got to practice you know every day you know you got to sharpen yourself up you know if you you know whatever it is that's that that's needed so you could be effective at what you're doing right so these are the things that the lord is speaking about people who practice sinning trying to find ways to sin these are the people that the lord says and I'm going to read it again. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. So it's the, the, we know that the devil is of sin. We know that our king, Yeshua, told the Pharisees, you don't know who I am because you don't know who my father is. If you knew who I was, you would, you would receive me. But you don't know who I am because your father is the devil. He's a, a thief, a murderer, a, a, a killer since the beginning of time, like kind of thing. You know, so be careful. The Lord said, be careful with those is pretending like they're uh, holy and righteous. You can't pretend this walk. The Lord will spit you out and chew you out. But you're amongst people who are struggling with their sin, but they're they are seeking mercy, they're seeking help. It's different. But we're talking about people who practice this, who, who set their minds to practice sinning. And we know sinning comes against God's laws. We know that you know uh, witchcraft is sin, um, abomination, Cult, um, we know lying is a, is a sin. We know that bearing false witness is a sin. We know that stealing and death is a sin. We know that uh, killing is a sin. We know that um, adultery is a sin. Like, there's so many sinful things that can go down the line, you know, of what sin is. So, there's people who practice sinning, and the scriptures say they are of the devil because the devil is of sin. Right? I'm going to read on. It says, For the devil has been sinning since the beginning of time. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. Okay, so the reason why Christ, our Lord and Savior, appeared is to destroy the very works of the devil. That means to destroy the sin. The sin that's in us. The sin that has us trapped. The sin that tempts us. That's what Christ appeared for. That's what scripture says. So when somebody's walking with Christ and truly touched by God, <clears throat> they are born again. They don't want to practice sin. They don't, they, it's not in their nature. They're born again. They have a different spirit. This is how we have to be able to know who's who. Because when you're born again and you have the spirit of Jesus in you, you no longer want to practice sin. You no longer want to be doing the same thing you used to do before. Smoking, drinking. Uh, having sex, uh, fornication, adultery, um, lying, bearing false witness, killing, um, homosexuality, um, whatever sin that is a lifestyle or practice of sin, you don't want to do these things no more because it's not, and you have a different spirit. You're born again into the kingdom of God. And scripture teaches us that, as I read, um, um, as it says, it says, the reason the Son of God, which is Jesus, appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So, if Jesus is walking with you, you're walking with Jesus, the works of the devil is destroyed off of your life. Sin is cast out of your life. Do we, do we, do we be tempted? Yes, we be tempted. 
by the devil because he only has the power to tempt. He has he he can't force us to make a choice. You know, um, he can't he can't he could trick us into making a choice, but he can't force us. We have to make our own choice and decision whether to sin or not. And another read on it says, "No one born of God makes a practice of sinning." Again, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seeds are blinds in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. So this is very important. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. For God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born again, born of God. So you can't. Once you're born of God, you have a different spirit. You have the seed of God in you. And you cannot keep on, you can't keep on sinning. It's, it, this, is, this is what... Uh, a lot of people are troubled by it when they say they're with God, they're working with God. If you're working with God, you will not want to practice sinning. It won't. It won't feel right to you. It, it won't. It, you will lose sleep. It won't. You can't practice sinning. And it says the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil, as we said. And it also says. Um, no one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God sees a blind to him. He cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. For this is evident, who are the children of God, okay? And who are the children of the devil? Okay, so there's two types of children. There's two types of children, guys. This is what God is trying to do to make you see, to make a distinction. There's two types of children, okay? There's the children of God and there's the children of the devil. And who are the children of the devil? Those who practice sinning. Now, people might be upset and, and, and get in their feelings, but this is the truth. This is the word of God, it's the truth. The people who don't practice sinning and practice righteousness and holiness are the children of God. Now, we're not talking about those who struggle in. And, and, and struggling to, to get right. We know that God is merciful. He's, he may be working on somebody. We're not talking about that. But we're talking about those who practice, those who want it, those who want to keep sick, those who want to commit adultery, fornicate, those who want to lie, steal, kill, and do all these things. They practice, they think about it every day, they do it every day. Those are the children of the devil. So that separates us, right? That puts a wedge in the, in the road that says, okay, how can you tell who's a child of God? Or how can you tell who's a child of the devil? Come on guys, open your eyes. Who's a child of God, who's a, who's a devil? Can you pinpoint in your life? Come on now, see this is gonna hurt a lot of people's feelings. But this is gonna wake people up and this is gonna get people to understand who you are in Christ and the word of God. This is what people are afraid to hear. This is why. They stoned Jesus. This is why they wanted to kill Jesus. This is why they hated Jesus. Because he made them see themselves. So God wants you to see yourself and to see who the children of the devil are. Who do you know in your life who practice sinning? Now there is adoption. Adoption, we know that. It, it being adopted as heirs as, as, as Christ, sons and daughters of God, right? There is a thing called adoption. That's why. It's the spirit of adoption that adopts us into the kingdom when we are born again, right? So that's why we have people who, who used to be sinning, who used to be with the devil, but for whatever reason, God called them, and now they're with God, they're with Jesus, they're saved. They've been adopted. They've been grafted and adopted into the kingdom, okay? So it's not like a throwaway case for everybody because... There was a time when I was a throwaway kid. There was a time you was a throwaway kid. Everybody sinned. Everybody committed some type of sin. And if you have it, you're lying. The scripture says. But there's nobody, you know, who came to this earth but Jesus. Who was without sin. So everybody has sinned and fought short of the glory. But we're talking about two different things. We're talking about those who practice in sin. So I'm drawing that line. If you're practicing sin, you are a child of the devil. And we have to know who is those kind of people in our lives. Okay, so the Lord wants you to open your eyes, be aware. It's going to be a short message. 
I thank the Lord for this message because it's for people I don't know who I'm talking to. Uh, but there's, there's things that the Lord is trying to open your eyes to. So you can see, you know, and to know who's the, the children of God. You see, the children and the, the, the children of God, you would know those who practice holiness and righteousness. Those are the children of God. Those are the children of God. I'm going to read it again. That's 1 John chapter 3, verse 10. By this, it is evident. This is evidence, strong evidence. Now, you know what evidence are, right? It's the truth. It's what you bring in the court of law evidence. Who are the children of God? Who are the children of the devil? This is evidence. That's what this word is saying. By this, it is evident. These are the truth, the evidence. There's no, there's no, let me second guessing, let me, let me take a minute to think about it. This is evidence. Who are the children of God? Who are the children of the devil? Whoever does not practice righteousness, if you don't practice righteousness, the word says you're not of God. Nor is the one who does not love his brother. Something a little bit deeper. Okay, so if I'm a brother in Christ, you're a brother, sister in Christ, right? If I hate you, and you have the same spirit, because we've been adopted by the spirit of adaptation into the kingdom of God. Then I don't know God. Pretty simple. I don't know God. I'm going to read, I'm going to move on and it's, um, to verse 15. That's chapter... Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brother. Okay, so if you hate your brother or your sister, you don't have God in you, don't have eternal life, because Jesus is eternal life. It's a lie. And how do we know, right? You know, scripture says about, I hate what my father hates, and my father hates evil. Sin is evil. So if you have someone in your life who hates evil and sin, and they practice righteousness, that is a child of God. You know? Those who practice sin, sinning every day, looking for ways, that is the child of the devil. Case closed. I'm just going to pray right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I just pray that you bless this word to reach all those that need to reach. I pray that you cover those who need to be covered by the blood of Christ. I pray that you heal those who need to be healed. Open their eyes so they can be able to see a child of God and a child of the devil, Father. So your children can be tricked anymore. For your word is true. Your word is faithful. I pray that your children know your word inside out, Father. May, may this word and your word for scripture edify them, inspire them, make them regroup and think and make them um, to remove what's not good in their lives and keep what's good in their lives so they can be blessed to you, Father. I pray that this is the word that will set them free, Father, to give them their breakthrough in the name of Jesus. I pray that this breakthrough will bring nothing but goodness in their lives, blessings in their lives, joy, happiness, and peace and shalom in their lives. I pray that this word this word will set the captive free in the name of Jesus. That it will heal the brokenhearted. It would, it would, it would make disciples out of nations and baptize them to the fire of the Holy Spirit. I pray that this word, this word, be a protection for your children, who was of you, Father, to protect them and shield them from the enemy and the devil's children. I pray that this word brings peace into the home, the house of your children. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Ah, that's a beautiful word. I know someone's going to get this. I thank you, Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord. Thank you for this word. In Jesus' mighty name. My name is my brother E. I'd like to thank you all for coming to another daily post of God's ministry. Peace and shalom. I love you guys with Yeshua's heart.